Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Saluna Computing's channel, modular scalable data centers that convert wasted renewable energy into computing power for intensive batchable applications, such as crypto mining. Joining us to discuss and give us a high-level overview of the company, a little bit of his history, we got John, the Chief Executive Officer. First and foremost, welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Kyle. Very happy to be on the show. Yeah, and a pleasure to get you on. So this is a fascinating industry, and I just want to dive into it because I'm sure most people are unaware of it, but, but many power plants uh, kind of produce more power than needed, and you're solving this rather unique issue. For newer audiences, maybe just give us that high-level overview, that elevator pitch to exactly what you're doing there. Yeah, at Saluna, we're on a mission to make renewable energy a, a global superpower. We want to have green electrons, the primary electrons on the global grid. And we're doing that by zooming in on a somewhat of a problem that's that, that's a bit of a secret in, in the renewable energy space. You know, most people are, are excited about the wave of climate change activity and clean tech that's taking off. So lots of investment are going into building these new power plants that use mother nature as their source of energy, if you will. Well, the grid wasn't really designed for those types of power plants. The grid is designed to drive power from synchronous power plants. In other words, they, they, they match the demand of, for energy to the supply of energy. And as the grid goes through a transformation where you start adding more green plants, where Mother Nature sets the dispatch schedule, if you will, when they should come on, sometimes there's more power available. Mother Nature is blowing the wind really hard or the sun is shining uh, uh, very brightly. So there's more power than, than the grid or the demand uh, is there. And so a lot of times the grid will signal to that power plant to cut off part of the power plant or reduce its size such that it can take that power that power that would otherwise have been produced doesn't get produced. And so it just gets wasted. And most people don't know that, but that's a huge problem. I think that, you know, we've, we've seen calculations of, you know, multiple, multiple terawatt hours uh, on a global basis uh, get, get lost. Billions of dollars of lost revenue uh, on an annualized basis get lost. What we do is we zoom in on that problem and say, how would you solve that problem? Well, there are actually three ways. One is, you could move the power. So if the wind is blowing very heavily in Oklahoma and the US, maybe you can move the power to Atlanta where they're, you know, they're partying over there. Um, well, it's most of the time that trans those transmission lines are very congested. They're long running projects, very hard to solve that problem to build more power lines, if you will. The second is you could store the energy. So batteries uh, are the initial thing that pop up. And uh, the problem with batteries is uh, their businesses too. So when they consume the energy, ideally the en energy cost is low. And then at some point they have to put it back to the grid when the energy costs are, are, are higher. And many times they can't do that because the same problem exists, right? When they're trying to put their energy back to the grid, the grid has too much energy and they're saying, you got to cut off. So it actually doesn't end up solving the problem as well. A perfect solution, it turns out, is computing. Computing is a highly scalable, energy-consuming uh, uh, application, if you will. There's a global demand for computing, and that's increasing a lot more now with new technologies like blockchain and Bitcoin and AI. And so what we do is we build modular data centers at the location where that power, power plant is based. And when it has excess energy, we consume that energy and convert it into computing that can be uh, uh, shared on a global basis. So that's our that's our focus as a company. We build uh, these super new advanced types of data centers that are really serving as almost a uh, a better battery than than batteries to help to drive the renewable energy transition. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the most fascinating conversations because it's so overlooked when you're especially looking at this earnings season that we're sitting through when most of the growth is still coming from the cloud centers of Google, uh, Amazon, exactly. AWS, and most people don't even know where those places are. They're like Fort Knox. They're very locked up tight and powering right. those things. I can't imagine the the intensity behind it and considering the volatility in the grid too, right? It's either too much power or too little peaker plant, yeah. so much infrastructure issues there. And I wouldn't mind asking you, I mean, uh, from a sector standpoint, where are you guys currently operating out of and what do you looking at from like a scalability um, future? So we have about 75 megawatts up now. We have a facility in Kentucky that was one of our uh, first designs. So what we've done as a company is we started small with a small facility up in Seattle area. So, so uh, uh, Washington State, uh, we actually bought it out of bankruptcy, refurbished it and did some testing to, to, to perfect our technology. And then we built a larger facility, a 25 megawatt facility called Sophie, 
we name all of our data centers after uh, women scientists, um, what, we, what we call badass catalyzers. So Sophie is named after Sophie Wilson, the designer of the ARM chip. And uh, that's a great facility integrated to the grid using hydropower, nuclear power, the power mix of that area. And there we perfected the design of the facility, uh, the deployment model, the software. And we're now energizing uh, 50 megawatts in Texas, uh, which is the first phase of a much larger facility uh, called Dorothy. It's a 100 megawatt facility. And we're, we've just started turning on the first 50 megawatts of it. And that one is integrated to a 150 megawatt uh, wind farm that has a lot of curtailment issues. Uh, they they, they uh, turned on the facility about five years ago. And consistently every year, the amount of wasted energy that they had uh, to deal with was much bigger um, to the tune of almost 40% of their power uh, gets wasted. And that's getting worse because more and more power plants are coming online. Not a lot of transmission is coming online. So that facility is, is, is helping them to monetize a lot of their energy. We have this phrase called sell every megawatt. A lot of power plants are not able to do that. And so by deploying our, our data centers in this way, we we're able to do that. We're looking at other parts of the country too. Um, uh, the SPP area. So, you know, middle America, uh, and some other parts where this of, of the country where this problem is is prevalent, but more importantly, um, when you look at uh, our company, we have two customers we're serving. Right, one is the power plant, so they have this challenge with uh, lots of wasted energy. We help them to to understand what it would mean to build a facility like this. We have a whole consulting practice that we actually deliver for them. And through that process, we design a facility for them. So as a result, we have almost a gigawatt of projects that are evolving at different phases that are like Dorothy. So Dorothy has become like the blueprint for us. And so the next project we have coming up is the second phase of Dorothy. And then we just announced a 166 megawatt facility also in Texas that's going to be connected to a much bigger wind farm, almost 300 megawatts that has the same problem lots of their energy being lost and we're starting the development process of that so there's about you know call it 700 megawatts to a gigawatt of these projects that are evolving in texas and other parts of the country that we're working on yeah i love the uh the focus here and i, I just want to roll back a little bit because how does someone like yourself i mean you were the lead tech or a lead <laughs> architect uh for intel's digital enterprise but what in your past led up to that aha moment that really kind of pushed you into uh saluna well, I've been an entrepreneur for about uh, 25 years or so, uh, Kyle. And um, if you look at uh, everything I've done in those, you know, two plus decades, there's a pattern in there. And that pattern is I'm always building a company that's the confluence between some big technology wave and some legacy industry. My first company in Boston that was focused basically on uh uh, the e-commerce space, and there was a big move to take the back office to the front office. <laughs> and uh, that was uh, a fast-growing business. And I took that to banks. I literally would walk into banks with a Lego block and say, this is how software is going to be built using you know, a combination of pieces and so forth. Um, and then uh, my next enterprise was you know, incubating a whole series of companies that did that. And then my most recent right before Saluna was uh, transforming insurance companies that did big decisions around underwriting that were mostly manual, uh, opening their eyes to the power of using data and analytics and basically building a Bloomberg type terminal. So you can see there's a, there's a confluence of different things coming together. Uh, Saluna was, was very similar, you know, similar pattern, right? Here you have a big wave of computing and blockchain coming to a legacy industry like energy. And the aha happened when I was invited to be the CEO of, of uh, Saluna uh, by the uh, our, our current chairman. And he told me that he had this project in Northern Africa that was a, a very big wind farm, almost 900 megawatts uh, potential. And uh, it was stranded. The energy was stranded because there was no grid there and hardly any power uh, consumers in that area because it was a young city. So they looked at lots of different things to solve the issue until they realized that maybe we could just put a, a data center here that was a big energy consumer as a way to catalyze that. 
And uh, through the process of working on that project, I learned a lot about energy around the world, energy on the African continent and how energy starved it can be, even though it has some of the best um, renewable energy resources. And what I realized was that this stranded energy problem is not just a problem in that location, it's a global problem. And so during 2020, when we couldn't really travel back and forth to the African continent, we started zooming in on where, who else has this stranded energy problem? And it turned out it was more ubiquitous than we had, uh, we had expected. Well, on that note, I definitely appreciate these insights. When we come back, we're going to explore a lot further. So if you guys want to consider subscribing for those updates, definitely hit that subscribe button and let us know what you think in that comment section below. So perhaps we can do an investor Q and a down the road, but on that note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Bye.